Hey guys, it's Jeff and welcome to a very special video. Now before we get into the heart of the video, I just want to take a few seconds to make note of the fact that this review is my 100% unbiased opinion and that I'm not being paid by anyone to review this bike. So with that said, a couple weeks ago I unboxed my 2019 Rad Rover from Rad Power Bikes and I assembled it in a video. At the end of that video, I promised that I would publish a more comprehensive review when I would have put some kilometers on the bike. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today is that day. Now, I've ridden the bike for just over 400 kilometers, and I feel like I'm ready to contribute a review. Do note that I will not go into much technical details today because there are much more knowledgeable people here on YouTube that can give you this information. You can check Bolton Bikes channel, for example. So the most important part of any e-bike is going to be the electronics, and on that front I think Rad Power Bikes delivered some of the best value on the market. The motor, controller and battery on the Rad Rover are very impressive for their size, and they seem to be of great quality. I haven't had a single issue with them in over 400 kilometers, so I'm pretty confident in them at this point. A lot of people also report getting some flat tires very often. So far in my 400 kilometers, I've had absolutely zero problem with flat tires. The most frequent question I get is how much range you get out of a charge and how much time does it take to charge the battery? Well, I'm a heavy rider and while I'm improving, I still pretty much only ride in the highest pedal assist mode and even then I get about 40 kilometers of range in average conditions and the charge time is roughly 2 hours. Being of Canadian spec, however, the controller is limited to only 500 watts as opposed to the 750 watts that the US spec bike gets. I'm quite content with the 500 watt, but should you be considering the Rad Rover and looking for more homes, do note that there is a vast and active community on Facebook dedicated to upgrading the bike. The rest of the bike is fairly straightforward. I like the handlebar and seat very much. I think that they're very nice looking with their leather wrapping and that they're super comfortable. The railier trigger system works well enough once you get used to it, and the brake levers feel sturdy and nice. That's actually probably the only good thing that I can say about the brakes, however, as the actual mechanical brakes provided are loud and very poor. For a heavy rider like myself, emergency braking is pretty much impossible, and I've already ordered a hydraulic brake conversion kit. The derailleur itself works decent enough, even after a professional adjustment it still misses gear shifts on occasion but it's nothing major. The gear themselves looks pretty sturdy, but I feel like the gearing isn't quite there. I like the crawler gear very much while going up hills, but I do wish the 2nd to 7th gear would be a bit more spaced out and that the 7th would be significantly smaller in order to allow more speed. I find I'm often going between 4th and 7th during my commute very rapidly, rarely using 2nd and 3rd, so I wish that could be tweaked a bit differently. The pedals are a sturdy metal with nice grips on them, and I think they work perfectly. The front shocks are a bit of a disappointment, even at their highest preload setting they still won't support my weight, and their travel is very choppy. I wouldn't be surprised if I don't actually make it through the summer with them, and although that was a bit expected and I'm already shopping for replacements, I still think it's a bit of a disappointment. One very nice feature of the Rover, however, are its integrated headlights and taillights, which are definitely bright enough to ride in pitch black night conditions, and although I would advise caution when riding at night because you get a lot less sense of your speed and hitting something with those puny brakes is more likely, it's more than adequate to be riding at night. So overall guys, would I recommend the Rad Rover? That is a resounding yes. I think Rad has ticked all the important boxes in order to get the bike to the price points that they wanted to sell them at. I do wish they would offer factory option so things like brakes and suspension could be upgraded from the factory at a cost and reduce waste. But overall it's a very nice bike. I will turn heads and draw attention though, so plan ahead for many discussions a day about this bike. For me, the benefits are humongous, and I can't wait to go ride it every morning, which is more than I can say about any other bike in this category. And with that, guys, I'm getting eaten alive by bugs, so I think I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you enjoyed the glory shots, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.